Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Dante with another optimization guide. Today we are gonna be looking at the game Dragon Ball Sparking Zebra. This guide will be divided into two parts. In the first part, I will guide you through some easy Unreal Engine 5 settings to make your game look better. In the second part of this video, we will be looking at the in-game graphics settings. We will compare them all visually and performance wise so that we can get the best optimized settings. So without further ado, let's get started. The first step is of course the Unreal Engine 5 part. This is basically the graphics enhancement part of this guide. For this, first we have to go to your system drive, users, your username, app data, local. Here you will find Sparking Zero folder. Go inside it, then saved, config, and inside Windows folder. Here you will find this engine.ini file. Open this with a notepad and scroll down to the bottom. Now you have to copy paste some commands here. I have written all of them in the video description. I will guide you about all these commands and what they do so you can add them according to your preference. The first line is system settings. This is basically a tag line which is needed and must have if you want any of the enhancements I am about to show you. So just copy paste it as it is. The first one is enhanced shadows. For this you need to copy paste these five lines under the system setting tag. What this does is apply high resolution shadows to the game making them look sharper. Here is a comparison of the game's default shadows with enhanced ones. As you can see the game uses very low resolution soft shadows while the enhanced ones look far better. Since this is a visual upgrade as expected the performance cost is around 10% to 12% depending on your graphic card so keep that in mind. The next one is Enhanced Ambient Occlusion. For this, you have to copy paste these 10 lines under the system settings tag like I have done. What this does is apply an enhanced version of ambient occlusion called GTAO. Here is a comparison of default versus GTAO. As you can see, the GTAO image looks more realistic with more depth to it while the default one looks a little flat. Just like enhanced shadows, this one also comes at a cost of around 5% to 8% depending on your GPU. The next 5 lines will actually save a lot of performance rather than costing it because they are used to apply the inbuilt upscaler feature present in Unreal Engine 5. The game by default has no upscaling option like DLSS FSR or frame generation. Luckily with these 5 lines we can apply upscaling to this game to save tons of performance. The number 75 here basically means the game will render at 75% of the resolution you have set in graphics settings and will then upscale it to your desired resolution just like DLSS and FSR do in games. So in short for any resolution you set in game this number 75 literally means a whopping 25% performance increase with almost no visual loss. The number 75 can also be decreased or increased if you want. The next one is how to get 120 or higher FPS in game. For this you have to first copy paste these 4 lines under the system setting tag. Then you must copy paste this new script engine tag and copy paste this line under the script engine tag as well. This game is normally locked to 60 FPS but doing this will give you 120 FPS in game. Be warned though, if your graphic card cannot handle 120 FPS at all times, you will get slowdowns in game because animation of this game is tied to FPS. The lower you fall from 120 FPS the severe the slow motion will be, so make sure your GPU is up to the task. All these values of 120 here can also be edited to even higher values like 144 if you ever desire it. The last one is to reduce shader compilation stuttering in this game. 
copy pasting these two lines under the system setting tag and this line under the script engine tag will do the trick. What this does is compile shaders during loading screens in game which will of course make loading screens a little longer but you will have far more smoother gameplay experience. And these were all the Unreal Engine graphic enhancements. After you are done copy pasting and editing all your desired lines, just save the file using notepad. Then go to the properties of the engine.ini file and set it as read only, so the game does not overwrite it. Starting the game after this will automatically apply all your desired UE5 enhancements on the game. And this concludes our first part of the guide. Now comes the optimization part of the guide. I will be using an RTX 3060 Ti on 1440p resolution for this. Since the game is locked to 60fps, I am using the FPS unlock method here and have set FPS to 144 so that we can clearly know which settings to choose depending on its performance cost. Just to inform, if anyone watching this video has skipped the Unreal Engine 5 setting part of the video, I recommend watching it as I have described how to apply upscaling to the game which will save tons of performance for you as the game by default has no upscaling option like DLSS or FSR. Also if you find this guide helpful, be sure to visit my other optimization guides as well which includes games like Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok and Tekken 8. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. When you enter the graphics options, the first few settings are very basic stuff. You have option for windows and borderless. Sadly the game has no full screen mode. Then there is resolution which everyone knows about. Screen number is only selectable if you have multiple displays. Resolution scale is used to increase or decrease your selected resolution by percentage. And vsync is used to cure screen tearing. Like I said, these are pretty basic things, so let's move on to the actual graphics settings. The first one, anti-aliasing, is used to decrease the jaggedness and pixelation of 3D objects. As the name says, this section controls the quality of anti-aliasing in the game. High uses temporal anti-aliasing or TAA. Medium uses a lower intensity of TAA. Low uses FXAA and off disables anti-aliasing in the game. When compared, you can see that high and medium look smooth. Low has some pixelation here and there due to being just FXA and off has jaggedness all over the place and looks bad. Performance wise, this setting is not taxing at all. In this scene, I had 108 FPS on off, 106 on both medium and low and 105 on high. Here I would recommend medium settings. The next setting is shadows, which controls the resolution of shadows in game. Here by switching the four shadow settings, you can clearly see the difference. Higher setting has sharper shadows, while off fully disables them making the image look flat. Performance wise going from high to medium, low and off gave me 107, 109, 117 and 125 FPS respectively. Here I recommend medium settings but if you really need the performance boost, you can select low. Also to notify that if you have enabled the enhanced shadows using the engine.ini file, that will override your settings here because you have done that part on the engine level. In that case, just set shadows to high. Textures in games are never demanding at all. The only requirement is that you have enough VRAM that the game requires. This setting increases the quality of textures in game. Luckily, even at high textures on 1440p resolution, this game only requires 3.8 GB of VRAM. So a 10 year old graphic card will have no problem running this at high which is also my recommended setting here as well. Still here is a comparison of all the texture settings. 
post processing quality applies a collection of post process effects in the game these effects include volumetric lights also known as god rays it also applies bloom and lighting to the game as you can see here switching from high to medium we lose these volumetric sun rays over here going from medium to low we lose overall lighting and bloom on the game performance wise high gave me 91 fps in this scene going from that to medium and low i had 93 and 101 fps respectively here i would recommend high settings because the lighting in low is very bad and there is very minor difference between the performance of medium and high the next is effects quality this applies effects like screen space reflections and ambient occlusion in the game as you can see here while i switch settings high has reflection and ambient occlusion medium has a lower intensity of both these effects while low disables reflections and ao in the game when compared performance wise high medium and low gave me 97 97 and 101 fps respectively here i would recommend medium setting just to be on the safe side also to notify that if you have enabled enhanced ao using the engine.ini file that will override the ao part of this setting depth of field or dof is an effect that blurs the objects at a distance while near objects remains the same in this part you can clearly see the characters near you while the others are blurred at a distance in this game depth of field only happens in cut scenes and not during normal gameplay which is fighting even in main menu only this part shows some depth of field and even that is only on high settings the rest of the settings look like depth of field turned off performance wise i had 85 fps at high going from that to medium low and off gave me 91 92 and 97 fps respectively here i recommend turning depth of field off lod quality means level of detail quality it controls the model quality and render distance of the objects in game here when going from high compared to low you can see trees losing leaves some objects literally vanished in the distance and even the ground surface losing a lot of quality performance wise high gave me 98 fps medium gave me 105 fps and low gave me 110 fps here i recommend high because of the huge difference in visual loss in the lower settings grass quality controls the intensity of grass going from high to low you can notice some patches of grass vanishing and off completely disables the grass in game performance difference between high and low was huge and to off was even far bigger difference Here I recommend low grass because of the insane visual loss of off setting. Motion blur is just a blurring effect of fast moving objects in games. This settings only controls its intensity in this game. All setting had no performance difference, so I leave it up to your personal preference. Camera shake is also a screen effect. and not an actual graphical effect that just shakes the screen depending on the action on screen this does not cause any performance loss at all the last setting is destruction effect quality visually i did not notice any huge difference between high and low apart from the black ground texture on low settings performance wise during this blast and destruction animation here I had 82 FPS on high and 90 on low. Here I would recommend low destruction quality. And here are all the optimized setting I recommend for this game. Now when you compare the game's high setting to optimized, we can see almost no visual loss. and the fps difference is huge 
going from 87 to 117 FPS. Also to note that this result was without the upscaling method. With upscaling, I can easily go from 87 to 145 FPS. And this brings us to the end of the guide. If this video was helpful to you, kindly like, subscribe and support the channel. Good luck and happy gaming.